Hello sweet exiles and welcome to the Enlightened Gloves crafting guide in Void's lab. If you always wanted to make a pair of gloves like these but did not quite know how to pull a craft like this off then this is the video for you. In this guide we will make a pair of gloves like these in a step by step format and on the way I will explain in detail everything that you need to know to be able to follow along and make your very own pair of sentinel gloves. I will take you with me on a crafting tour where I will show you around and you will be able to see many steps before the craft starts as well as your tips and tricks between main crafting stats. With that I'm sure most of you will get something out of it no matter if you are a novice crafter or already have plenty of experience. But let's have a quick look at the 8 main steps of this guide. The first step will be knowledge acquisition, where we learn everything that we need to know to craft and work with sentinel mods on gloves. And the second step, we will be looking at base items, which includes picking the right base, as well as where to buy them. Then in the third step, we will prepare those bases to then in the fourth step, force craft a sentinel mod onto one of our bases. In the fifth step, we will transfer a ethics and merge it with our sentinel mod and in the 6th step we will take care of the suffix crafting of the gloves. In the 7th step we will take care of the eldritch implicits of the gloves. And in the 8th and final step we will add the finishing touch. And with that let's get started, shall we? Step 1. Knowledge Acquisition Since we will be crafting a very special pair of gloves with a sentinel mod on it, we first need to find out if this sentinel mod has any requirements. This will lead us to the website PUEDB. Here on the main page, under Sentinel League, and we can find a Mechanics Recombinator. On this page we can find all the Sentinel mods on all items, but we are mostly interested in what can occur on gloves, and which are those three mods here, and those are Empower, Enhance and Enlighten. On this page we can learn everything that we need to know about the Sentinel mods. We go from left to right. The item level has to be item level 68 for a mod to occur. The mod on gloves here is a prefix and for the uh, um, power this mod can only roll or naturally occur on gloves with a strength requirement or enhance on gloves with a dex requirement and the enlighten can only roll on gloves with a int requirement. The attribute requirements for the different sentinel mods and gloves namely a strength, a dex and int, also tells us that on hybrid gloves two different sentinel mods can naturally occur. Now we want to know if a multiple of those sentinel mods can appear on a single item. For that we can hover over the icon here, which tells us in which mod, mod group the mod is. This mod group name is supported by exceptional support. If we hover over the next, it's the same, supported by exceptional support, and the last one as well, supported by exceptional support. Since all of these are in the same mod group, only one of those mods can ever be on a single item. Now knowing this, we want to stay away from hybrid gloves and stick to a pure base of any given attribute. Pure strength, pure dex or pure intelligence gloves. For now, this is all the knowledge we needed from this website and we can go over to step 2, to the base item. A quick note here, very soon I will have crafting guides for all three sentinel mods and gloves ready. So no matter if you want to craft a pair of enlightened, empower or enhanced gloves, these guides will have you covered. So make sure to check them out if you like the format. Since this is the crafting guide for enlightened gloves, we will of course pick a pure in base. If you want a quick overview over all the glove bases there are, I recommend checking out the PUE wiki. Here on the page we will be typing gloves in the search bar and on the recommended page we will be able to see all the base items there are for gloves. For this guide we will be looking at gloves with pure energy shield since their only requirement or attribute requirement is intelligence which means only the level 4 enlightened mod can roll on these kind of gloves. For simplicity I will go and pick the base with the highest energy shield on it which are sorcerer gloves. Now to the item level of our base. When I craft any kind of armor piece 
I generally go with an item level of at least 84, which allows me to roll the highest tiers of resistance modifiers. But depending on the piece of armor, there can be other interesting mods that require a higher base level for the top tier roll. To make sure I won't miss out on something that could be of use to me, I will quickly look it up on PUEDB. On this page we can see all kinds of base items we can look up to then see what kinds of modifiers they can have. To get here, just navigate to the index modifiers and click onto modifiers. For this guide we will be looking for gloves with a pure end requirement and on the following page we can see all the modifiers that can appear on these kind of gloves, sorted into prefixes and suffixes. Since the crafting method I chose for this guide only requires us to roll suffixes, we can leave the prefixes aside and focus solely on the eye level requirement of suffixes. A quick look onto the suffixes reveals that there are three mods that require a higher item level than 84, which are Dexterity, Accuracy Rating and Increased Energy Shield Recharge Rate. Ok, at this point we acquired all the knowledge we need about Sentinel mods on gloves and the base item we want to work with. So now it's shopping time, because we need bases and we will need plenty of them, on average about 50, so let's get going. Of course we could buy them on the regular trade side one by one and if we are lucky we run into a seller who has multiple of them, or what I will do is go on the TFT discord server and buy them there in bulk. Here, on the Forbidden Trove Discord server, you can buy all sorts of base items in bulk. For that, you will have to navigate all the way down until you find the trade league you are in. For Sentinel League Softcore, we want to navigate to the category Sentinel SC Bulk Want to Sell. Here, we will click on a Bulk Bases Want to Sell and here we will find different sellers and that are offering their items and how much they have in stock. In case everything is sold out or no one is responding, don't worry. Just go one category up to a Sentinel SC Bulk Want to Buy and there click on a section Bulk Basis Want to Buy SSC and here you can make a short post of what kind of item you are looking for. Preferably you will include the item level of the base and if you can help it, what are you willing to pay per base? Usually it will only take a couple of minutes until a seller will contact you. Alright, now that we have acquired enough bases, it's time to go over to main step 2 where we prepare those bases. In this step we will prepare our bases and the first thing we will do is to scour them all down to white items. Then. We will fill up our inventory with the first set of gloves, grab a stack of armor recombinator and scouring orbs and move over to the crafting bench. Since the sentinel mod we are looking for is a prefix, we will craft a prefix, any one prefix on all of our bases and I will explain in a moment why we do this. Also, it doesn't matter which prefix or what tier the craft is. The only thing that matters here is that it's the same prefix on all items. So let's pick something that is cheap and we have plenty of. Alright, since that's done, we are ready for main step 3, Sentinel Mod Force Crafting. In this step, we will force craft a clean Sentinel Mod onto a rare item, where the Sentinel Mod is the only mod on the item. This will make the next crafting steps way easier and less of a RNG fiesta. For that we will use a method I came up with myself and if you are curious to know more about how and why I got to this method then I recommend you watch this video here where I elaborate on that in more detail. At first we have to find out if the sentinel mod is a prefix or a suffix. Then we will benchcraft on all of our white bases a a prefix if the sentinel mod is a prefix or b a suffix if the sentinel mod is a suffix. Important is only that we benchcraft the same mod on all of our bases. So if we craft for example flat life as a prefix then we will need to craft flat life on all of our bases. As third step we will recombinate the prepared bases until one of the results of the recombination turns into a rare item. The moment the item turns rare 
we will have a guaranteed Sentinel mod on our base. This will take on average around 50 tries, which represents a chance of 2% to occur. Once that's done, we remove the crafted mod on the bench and we now have a clean Sentinel mod on a rare item. Since you made it that far into the video, I would highly appreciate it if you could give it a like. That way it can spread to even more people and in the long run will help the channel grow. And with that, we can move to step 5, FX transfer. This step is optional and involves RNG crafts that may cause you to lose the Sentinel mod on your gloves. If you are fine with a pair of gloves with only the Sentinel mod and another crafter prefix as well as 3 suffixes, then feel free to skip ahead to crafting step 6. But if you intend to craft a pair of sentinel gloves with an additional transferred prefix on it, like the plus 2 to AoE gems, or any other prefix really, then let's jump right into it. Ok, let's make our goal in this stamp clear. We want to merge these sentinel mods from the base that we just created with another prefix, a veiled modifier that grants plus 2 to level of AoE gems from a second pair of gloves. To lower the risk that is involved with such a move and to ensure the pair of gloves we end up with has the right base, we will closely follow these two points. First, we have to make sure that the second pair of gloves where the prefix is on that we want to move over to, the, to our sentinel mod uh, only has one prefix and this prefix for this example is the plus 2 level of AoE gems. Should there be any other prefix beside that, we firstly have to get rid of it before we can continue. Second, we have to ensure that the second pair of gloves has the right base and the right eye level. Here I prepared a few example items. The first pair has as prefix of course the plus 2 level of AoE gems as well as another crafter prefix which we can easily remove on the crafting bench and then this pair of gloves would be ready to go on to the next step. The second pair of gloves here has same, we have the AoE gems here but we have another fixed prefix that we, before we can continue, firstly have to remove or annul off. If we succeed, we can move forward. Then the third pair here is a wild card which I created by simply slapping a Veiled Keras Orb onto one of our bases. Here is the Veiled modifier is a prefix and we have another fixed prefix, a maximum energy shield and then I crafted on it on the free or the free remaining prefix a plus level of socketed Migli gems which is also a modifier you can only get from Veiled items. I crafted this modifier because if I now unveil the plus level of socketed melee gems is blocked and cannot roll and with that our odds of unveiling the plus 2 level of AoE gems is vastly increased. Once we get at least one pair of plus 2 AoE gems gloves ready, we can move to the final preparation before we start to slam them with the recombinator. Right now both of our gloves have only one prefix. For suffixes, at this point we do not care at all about them, so for now just forget that they are even there. In the final preparation step we will do what is called doubling mods and you can see this as a way to trick the recombinator. Here it will help us to increase our overall odds of success. Right now we have a total of two prefixes, one on each item. On item 1 we have our sentinel mod and on item 2 we have the plus 2 to AoE gems mod. Doubling means we will now benchcraft one of the two prefixes we have onto the opposite pair of gloves. In this case we can do this only for the plus 2 to AoE gems by crafting plus 1 to AoE gems onto the pair of gloves with our sentinel mod on. The plus 2 to AoE gems and the plus 1 to AoE gems are the same mod, they just different in tier. To better understand and visualize what we just did, we will have a look at a very handy tool that I like to use. The Recombinator Calculator which was created by the Reddit user Myris. Thanks for that Myris. You will find a link to this tool in the video description under resources. 
Here we have our item 1 and our item 2. And those are grouped up into prefixes and suffixes. Here we can enter the prefix from item 1, which is our sentinel mod. And here we can enter the AOE gems mod from our item 2. Here we can select which of those modifiers uh, we want on our final item. And here at the bottom we can then see what are the odds for this to happen. For us the sentinel mod is the most important mod here. Since creating the base for it did cost us a lot more time and resources compared to the plus two to AOE gems. Which only cost a fraction of that. If the sentinel mod survives, in case we do not succeed, means we can easily go again. Uh, let's compare our odds for that before we doubled the AOE gems and then after we doubled the AOE gems. Before doubling, our odds for our sentinel mod to uh, appear on the final item and with that the odds for the sentinel mod to survive are 66%. Now if we double again and we put in here the AOE gems again, now we can see our odds of survival of the sentinel mod are now 80% which is significantly higher. This becomes even more apparent if we compare the chancing of losing the sentinel mod. Before doubling we will lose the sentinel mod 1 out of 3 times and after doubling it's only 1 in 5 times. With that I hope it's now clear why doubling in this case is a very good thing. It's finally time to hit the recombinator. Now that we finally have our two design prefixes on the same item it's time for step 6 suffix crafting. Here we will start to work with Eldritch Currency. If you have not yet worked with Eldritch Chaos, Anul or Exalted Orbs, then I will briefly explain it here. These three Eldritch Currency work exactly like you know it from the regular orbs, except for one major difference. The Eldritch Chaos, Anul and Exalted Orb can only target prefixes if the item is dominated by the Searing Exarch, which is the Red Influence. This also works the other way around and they can only target suffixes if the item is dominated by the Eater of Worlds, which is the blue influence. Dominated by a certain influence means that one of the influence implicits on the item is higher in tier than the other. Since we want to craft suffixes we will of course dominate the item by the Eater of Worlds. For that we will use a lesser average acre on our gloves and can now safely start to work on the suffixes until we are satisfied with the result. Okay, now we will benchcraft the remaining prefix on our gloves and we are done with all the affixes and can go over to main step 7, implicit crafting. Before we start we will yet again go to PUEDB and look up all the Eldritch implicit modifiers for gloves. Once we decided on two mods we want, it's time to roll the dice. For the most part I will go with the following strategy. First I will roll with greater or sometimes grand currency the mod I want to upgrade to a higher tier. Once I hit it I will then take the currency of the other inference that is at least the same tier or even better that is one tier higher and will apply it once. It doesn't matter which mod I hit here. Now we'll use a orb of conflict. One of the mods will be upgraded, the other downgraded. If the mods have the same tier, the odds of upgrading one or the other are equal. But if the mods are different in tier, the odds of upgrading the mod will lean towards the mod with the lower tier and those odds further increase with the number of tiers between the mods. Once we upgraded our desired mod to the tier we want, we pick one of the cheaper currency of the other influence and roll until we have the second implicit we want. With that we are done here and move on to the final step of this guide which is the finishing touch. In this step we will make our new pair of gloves nice and shiny by applying 30% quality to it and then turn all four sockets white. This step is completely optional. And if you are already satisfied with your new pair of gloves then I congratulate you for making it this far. But if you think your new gloves could use a little bit more polish then come and follow me over onto the TFT discord server where we will snipe a couple of syndicate crafts. Here on the TFT discord server 
we will scroll all the way down to the category Sentinel SC services. And here in the section services want to sell SSC, uh, we will look for people that are selling um, T4 Hillock armor, 30% quality, will cost us 1x. And the same guy is also selling a T4 Borici 1 to 6 wide sockets. If you're buying with a 4 socket item, what I will do is usually uh, people will of course want uh, to hit the 6 wide sockets, so it's more money for them. Um, but since, uh, since we only have a 4 socket item, I message them and tell them in advance that I will pay for 6 sockets if they hit 4 whites. So let's snipe a couple of those crafts and I will see you in a minute. Once you successfully purchased a service from someone, be so nice and vouch for them. Under the category Service Vouchers, here ping them and briefly explain what kind of service they completed for you. We are finally done. 30% quality, 4 white sockets. Man, just look at these bad boys. All nice and shiny. And with that, We've come to the end of the video. I hope you had a good time and could pick up a thing or two. Thanks for watching and take care everyone. All right, since that's done, we are ready for main, <laughs> main step. <laughs> oh, fuck, Bobby boy. Mm.